welcome to the Hammer Away Show. I am your host, Cynthia W. Hammer, and we are live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, Mixed Station Baltimore, and LA Talk Radio. Let's pray in. Father God, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Please allow me to be a vessel, work through me. Thank you for my health, finances, my emotional state, my physical and mental healthy mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we have a great show today. Um, we have Jen Ulu coming on. She is the author of Yahoo De Who. And when she arrives, I will allow her or ask her to tell you all about it. Everyone, please pick up a copy of my latest novels, Who's at the Door? A Good Case, The Seven Rivers, and Iceberg. Who is at the Door is actually my fourth novel. Look at that. God is good. Who is at the Door? Front cover was illustrated by a friend of mine. Well, my my girlfriend's son. So my girlfriend's son is the illustrator, Mr. Leon Barnes, a graduate of SCAD University. And he, I sketched it with pencil, you know, like, I don't know, something like maybe a 12 year old would do. Like I sketched the outline. He got the picture correctly with the uh, colors that I chose and the eyes and just the hand movement, everything that I saw in my head and sketched on paper, he was able to bring to a better surface and, and create a beautiful um, depiction of, of uh, this scary murder mystery. I don't want to give the book away, but you got to tell people what the book is about. So who is at the door? is the sequel to my, oh, don't fall, is the sequel to my novel, my second novel, A Good Case. A Good Case is about the um, two caregivers working in Beverly Hills. And, yeah, that's better. Working in Beverly Hills and, um, it's the behind the scene look at the billion dollar home health care industry. So what, what I did was I gave the audience more. People wanted more. So I gave them the continuation of the main character, Sheila Price, who is a very smart caregiver, a little bit of a smart aleck, but she doesn't take any stuff from her clients or her aid, the agencies that she works for, but her main focus is the client, the patient. And through a series of circumstances, she's searching for work in Los Angeles. So good case um, was so good. And the caregiver, the caregiving world really loved um, a good case, the nurses, doctors, uh, the whole medical field. And people just wanted to hear more. And, and so I bring her in uh, California, coming into California, and she arrives, and um, and then she goes and takes a case in New York. So, um, everyone, look for um, who is at the door on Barnes and Noble, um, Amazon, all online book retailers. And so, you know, people always ask, "What am I reading?" So, I am actually reading. I usually when I'm writing, I don't really do a lot of reading, but I, I like to read because I am a reader. So I'm actually reading Maya Angelou, The Heart of a Woman. And I, now that I've started reading it, I know I read it many, many years ago, but I'm going to read it again. And it opens in um, Laurel Canyon and she is meeting Billie Holiday. And I, I got the chills just thinking about it. Can you imagine Laurel Canyon in the 1950s and Billie Holiday is coming to your house for dinner? So I'm, I'm enjoying reading, but I remember now that I, I know, I don't know what happens, but I remember uh, her, her auto, one of her many autobiographies. So, and we have a, again, a marvelous guest 
coming on today. We have Miss Jennifer Ulu. Olu, Ulu, she's going to correct me. Anyway, without further ado, hi, Jen. Welcome to the Hammer Away Show. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? I am wonderful. <laughs> okay, so we're jumping right in. I did say it's Ulu. It's Olo. 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 O-L-O-O. Yes, I know. It's the extra O on the end. It confuses everyone in America. <laughs> oh, okay, so, so don't try to do the Lou, do Olo. Exactly. Like, I don't know. I, I no, like, <laughs> like, like a Rolo, right? <laughs> yes, yes. But you know what? It's interesting because when people have names, different names, and, and I and I, I usually get it right once they tell me. Usually I'm pretty good at getting it right when I when I can see how it's spelled out. But they say, oh no, well, people just call me they and they shorten it. I said, no, no, no. I'm gonna call you by your name. <laughs> I want people to call me by what I want to be called, not by what's easier, you know, because you right. get that, right? Right. I, yeah, I get, I don't know if it's just being a Jennifer. Like, I think I have the most popular name of everyone born in 1977. Um, but I, I get a lot of Stephanie. I get a lot of Michelle. Like people just think my name is something different. <laughs> it's the strangest thing. But it, I mean, I'm, I answer to, hey, you, like it really doesn't matter to me. Um, yeah, it's interesting. My, my husband actually, so my husband's from Kenya Mm -hmm. and not to get too sidetracked, but it's relevant to the name. So his last name, they don't do last names the same way in Kenya that they do here in America. Mm -hmm. So you don't take your father's last name. You actually take his middle name as your last name. And so when my husband immigrated to America, he put on his forms that, you know, he had the middle name of his dad and that his dad had his, you know, Olo, which was the last name. So America decided to fix it for him. Mm -hmm. Of course they did. Thinking that he must have been mistaken or filled out the form wrong. So we ended up with the last name Olo, which is actually not my husband's last name. In Kenya, his last name is Akita. Oh, wow. Isn't that so funny? That's, so That's so America. <laughs> that's about right. We choose to say funny or <laughs> amusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... But, yes, but yes, it's a, it's a testament to, um, you know, maybe some of the ways that we um, adjust. Uh, yeah. Or adjust for other people on their behalf. Yeah. On their behalf, they... which, which, <laughs> which is not always given back but there's really no need to I think people need to grow yeah yeah so we'll see we're getting our citizenships um started this year in Kenya for myself and the kids and so uh we'll see if if we end up being Akita in Kenya or if we have to be Olo in Kenya it'll all be very interesting I'll keep you updated yeah please do come back on and tell us all about it okay so let's start with you okay so Jennifer Olo uh Welcome again to the Hammer Way Show. Let's let's talk about uh, what do you do? What, what do you do? Because I okay, let's start with your book. You have a book. I do. I have two books actually. So they, I have. I don't know if you can see these or if they're backwards. Yeah. But, um. But this is Yehudi Who. Yeah, Yehudi Who. Uh-huh. And um, Yehudi is based on a character that my grandfather told me about when I was like four. Um. And I think I've told you this story, but he took me to the refrigerator and he said. Did he opened the door and he said, did you see him? And I was like, did I see who? And he said, Yehudi. And I'm like, what is he like my dad and grandpa's losing it. And he said, Yehudi turns on the light in the fridge when you open the door. And I was like, what? Like there is a little person in the fridge that's turning on the light. So then of course I drove my grandmother nuts that whole day, like trying to open and close the fridge really fast, you know? And she's like, stop opening that. You're going to break my fridge. And, um, Uh, you know, it was, it was great because my grandfather wasn't an incredibly playful guy, Mm -hmm. but this was like his way of playing with us. Yeah. So every time we went to my grandpa's house, we would try to find Yehudi and we learned that Yehudi did all these other helpful things around your house. So like when you pull a tissue out of the Kleenex box and the next one pops up, that's Yehudi, Yehudi. right? And yeah, and so he, like he does all these things. So the the so the first book is really all about who Yehudi is, mm-hmm. and um and it talks about what he does around the house and why he does it. And then um, the second book is called Celebrating Differences, 
And um, that one is more about um, really honoring and and um, and um, cherishing and and um, you know being in, more embedded in one another's lives within friendships. Like I, I the inspiration for that book was really that um, you know. I have a lot of different types of friends from a lot of different types of backgrounds. In fact, my two co-authors are, one is from, was born in Iran and one is first generation Cuban American. Like we're, you know, we're a diverse group mm -hmm. and certainly, you know, my husband's from Kenya and, or from Kenya and, and my children are, are um, biracial, but I, um, I felt like I didn't ever really immerse myself in mm -hmm. those cultures or take a genuine interest. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to write a book about how we can celebrate differences as opposed to just kind of acknowledging and saying, oh yes, I know you're Jewish and you do this, or I know that you are you know, this other religion and you do this, but, but really be curious and, um, and how that curiosity and learning can bring us together mm -hmm. and bring us closer. Mm -hmm. So that's really what the second book is about. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been super fun. Yehudi is a great character and uh, it's a fun way to remember my grandpa for sure. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a, it's a great book. Um, your illustrator, who's your illustrator? Um, her name is, her name is Leron and she is from Barcelona. So there you have it. Yes. We're a very global group. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you, I know on this show, we talk about there's no instantaneous way to success. Hammering away, hammer away is no instantaneous way to success. You have to bang, chip, or hammer away at life. Taking the highs with the lows, you know, sometimes when we hit the the, uh, the valley, you know, you have the high peaks, then you have the low valley, and people have to climb, and, and you they see you with your books, and they think, oh, it happened overnight, and we're like, no, there's a lot in between, so um, I, when I met you, you were a head of a corporation, you were doing, um, I know you were an entrepreneur at the yep. time. Okay. Yeah. So I, so I've done, I I've done, and I still do a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats and I'm a mom of three. So that's my, that's my first responsibility. One, that's first know, job. Yeah. To yeah. them and to the world, right. Is to raise good humans. So um, that's a huge focus for me. Um, but I also work um, in marketing technology for a, a company that I helped to build back in 2007. And we went through um, a private equity acquisition and I was on the board and, and went through that piece and was an EVP over there. And then I recently, like in the last couple of years, went back they called me and they said, Hey, can you please come consult for us? And, you know, um, and so I do that all remotely from home. Mm -hmm. um, my husband runs a virtual reality um, technology firm. And so, and I helped him to found and, and launch that. Um, gosh, it's been 10 years now since we did that. Wow. Um, and so 10 years and 10 years and going strong. Um, but I, I play a role in that, you know, sitting on the board and um, paying attention to trends and, and what's needed in the marketplace. And um, he's mostly working in architecture and, um, and getting into some entertainment and stuff there as well. But really exciting space, VR, mm -hmm. lots of stuff going on there with metaverse and web three. And so my brain's always nerding out on that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, and then I also do marketing consulting. So, um, aside from Yehudi and, you know, it's funny because you like, you're right. People say, oh my gosh, this has happened for you overnight. This is so great. Like, so this story, this story started when I was four. Right. right? right. <laughs> and so through my whole childhood and my whole adult life, I'm developing this story in my head. My grandfather gave me this bit, you know, this mm -hmm. little bit. And so there's all of that stuff, which we never account for the creative process, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And this is just right. the process over your life, right? Like, just like you, you have these experiences over your life and that's what inspires you to write. Mm -hmm. So you have all of that time, but then, gosh, it was probably 2014. So 12, it, no, a lo longer, 12, 2014, when my friends and I, who co-wrote the book, mm -hmm. um, book, we were all working in advertising for big corporations. Mm -hmm. And we, um, we were so just done with all the corporate branding stuff. And we, we were sitting around one day and we said, you know, we should, we, and we'd all started to have kids and mm -hmm. we thought we should do something fun for the kids. Like 
we're such creative people. Like, let's do something creative and fun for the kids. Mm -hmm. And so that was back in 2014 when we started bouncing ideas and using our children as test market. (laughs) (laughs) So, so we would tell them we had, we pitched each other different stories, different ideas, and then we would kind of share with our kids and see what took. And my, my friend said that the kids would not stay away from their refrigerator after they told them about Yehudi. Like it, they were like, it's Yehudi. Got it. So there's that whole process, you know, of what are you going to do and how are you going to launch it? And um, we had our first book launch party after probably 12 months of writing and illustrating and um, developing characters. I mean, all that stuff takes a long time. It does. We had, yeah, we did, a, we did a launch party down here at a bookstore in um, Palos Verdes, mm-hmm. and we probably had, you know, 100 people show up and even to get a hundred people to show up. I mean, that's a big deal for a book signing. What, right? Hello. And, I mean, and yeah. yeah. And there was like, we made it extra, right? Like there was free food. Right. <laughs> you you have to. You have to even get them there. I know. So, um, and then with the first book, like you said, ups and downs, you know, with the first book, um, gosh, it, it took, um, maybe two years before we had any kind of recognition like on Amazon. So, but then all of a sudden we were in the top five children's books on Kindle three mm-hmm. months ago, mm-hmm. like bam, bam, bam. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we had 250, you know, five-star, four-star reviews on Amazon. And it was like, bang, crazy. And that's hard to do. It It is a lot of work and it's- yeah it's marketing, right? Like we, cause we don't have big budgets for advertising spend. So it's a lot of marketing. It's a lot of just do, 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 get the word out, talk, talk, talk. And then, um, and then this, you know, that was like high, high, high. And then we launched the second book, like I think 18 months later, it took us a little longer than we wanted. And, you know, and then you get like, you go from 250 five-star reviews of your first book to like 20 of your second book. And you're like, what happened? You know, so it it's really yeah. I mean, but in the but in the writer's world, as far as creativity goes, uh, what I have learned is just because sometimes if it says it over here doesn't mean it's not that way over here. You know what I mean? Like people really may be, like your second novel. The whole you know, not all the time it it it, it sticks into the advertising. You might it may not pop up in the feed, but it doesn't mean the book's not selling. And so. Right. Uh, the book that you created, two great books um, for for children. The concept, the idea, is 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 not has not been heard of. So that book will always be popular. And then you have the kids are always being burst. <laughs> there, you know, thank goodness, you know, we have always going to have that nice flow of of, of of children in different, you know, in that generation that will be reading your book. It's it's almost like a Dr. Seuss. It's a given. Your mm-hmm. book will be passed through or passed down. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. That's oh, nice. Oh, for sure. I, I is, so. is genius. It's a genius thought. No one has put the little man in the refrigerator, <laughs> right? I don't think so. I mean, we researched it because we were like, where did he get this from? Yeah. And we have we have found references here and there, but it's like very, there's like this very thin layer of yeah. who yeah. this who And you brought that for. back because when I was a kid, I think I, when I was helping my mom, when I would take you, she would take me to work. There was a man that used to say there was someone in the fridge. I didn't pay him to mind. It kind of scared yeah. me. Not really. Cause you know, cause you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I thought he was messing with me, but I think he was trying to say, you know, the light and it didn't, but now it comes yeah. back. But that right. is, that is what we, cause you know, we didn't have like computers. So you had to create and it was a, a way of having fun and yeah. It's a great story. Yeah, thank you. It's I mean, a great story. and that's the, what you just said is exactly what I hoped for Yehudi. Like I, I love Yehudi because my grandfather didn't need anything to play. We find Yehudi with us. Yes. We, we could play it anywhere. We yeah. didn't have to use money. We yeah. didn't, you know what I mean? Like, and so mm-hmm. with my kids growing up, I like, especially when things kind of get in a panic mode and maybe like, I'm trying to do something over here and they're crazy over here. I'm like, Hey, does anybody see you hoodie? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're like, Oh, did you see him? And then it's <laughs> like, and I love that because it, it makes every moment playful. Yes. And 
and it, it can transform any moment. Even when I'm in a moment of chaos as a parent, trying to juggle a million things and trying to manage through them, you know, it can just kind of bring everything down. And well, if you're looking for your car keys, does your kid say you already got them? That one right. day, bring back the keys. But you know, you <laughs> see, the simplicity of us, where we're growing up, the uh, generate, um, generation X, are we X? Yes. <laughs> we're so um, the, um, the, the building your fort in your bedroom, because we used to put blankets over the furniture. And let me tell you something. My parents didn't take us out on the weekend. We didn't have a whole lot, but we, we, we were rich in love. But let me tell you, if we got to turn our bedroom into a fort, you know, the blankets everywhere, draped over the curtain, it was black, and then you crawl in that little space. Oh my gosh, that was living. So yeah. it's just a, the idea of a kid's, a child's mind is it's so expansive if you allow it to grow and not yeah. force our thoughts. Let them have uh, the imagination, the fantasy. Yeah. You know, and that's what you, Yahoo Who brings. Uh, Yahoo Who is, is the fantasy, you know, the, you. The allowing the kid to, to be a kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we, we need more of that. You know, I feel like my, my kids are growing up fast, but I feel like a lot of that too just has to do with the environment today. You know, they, they're different kids. They have to be equipped differently than we were. Well, let's transform into that then. Let's, let's uh, transform. Uh, that, speaking of children, um, let's kind of transition into you are a, also a momager because I know people are watching. They're going to want to know her son's a child actor. And oh my God, I want my kid to be. So give it to him, Jen. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, when people talk to me about getting their kids into acting, I say, well, if, as long as it's their passion and not your passion, right? And, and that they are willing to do the work because it's a lot of work. And then that you also can juggle and make it work with your schedule because you, um, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. So Jaden is 12 now, and he started telling me that he wanted to act from the time that he could talk. He would say, mom, I'm going to be on TV. Mom, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be on a show or I'm going to be in a movie or that sort of thing. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then when he was three, he was really pushing, pushing, pushing. And so we, um, so I had some headshots done and I was like, I'll just send them out to some agents and see what they say. I didn't expect to get anything back. I got eight agents that called back and said they wanted to meet him. And I thought, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> like, now I gotta go meet these people. But thankfully I had some really smart people in my life and, and luckily being in LA and having people around me that are in entertainment, they said, oh, don't go to all those eight people vet those people, make sure those people are representing, you know, people that are, that are doing work. Right. Mm -hmm. mm, there's a lot of, there's a lot of iffy people out there. Um, and some of them want to charge you money and all kinds of things. So I narrowed it down to two and we went and met those two. And, um, and the first one, we liked both of them. Okay. But the, the second one was the one I really liked. And, um, he, <laughs> he tried to get Jaden to audition, you know, and he said uh, he was doing something for those little oranges, those little cutie oranges. Mm -hmm. And he said, can you say cuties are for kids? You know, and Jaden's three. So like, he's not like reading, he couldn't do a script memorization or anything like that. And Jaden said, I can, but I would like to sing you a song. <laughs> and the agent was like, you can sing me a song, but could you first say cuties are for kids? And Jaden was like, mm, I would really like to sing. And so the agent was like, I love him. He's fantastic, but you got to bring him back when he can follow direction because he, because he'll get on, he'll get booked. He was like, no, he'll get booked like right away. But as soon as they get him on set, they'll be like, oh crap. You know, like we have this kid who won't do what we say. <laughs> exactly. Hey, so, that's great advice. And I felt like that was a really smart agent. You know what I mean? He wasn't, he was, he wanted to protect his reputation, right? Not putting kids out there just because they're cute, right? They need to also pay attention and follow directions and all those things. Um, and, um, 
but he, I felt like he was not just taking us because he wanted to try to make money or do, you know, whatever it was. Um, so I really liked him a lot. And so I took his advice and we just went back home and kind of went about our lives. And then, um, when, and then Jaden started taking acting classes mm -hmm. and, uh, and Jaden also has ADHD, which has been a challenge. And he, he's okay with me saying that he's actually an advocate for mm -hmm. children's mental health as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but he, um, he had ADHD and it was challenging. So he was in an acting class and he got kicked out of acting class because he couldn't focus. Mm -hmm. And a couple of weeks after that, the teacher called me and she said, there's a play that is starting up in Hermosa beach at the playhouse. And it's an all adult cast, but they're looking for one kid to play the main character in this play. And, um, she's like, I think Jaden would be great. Can I forward his information to the director? And I was like, didn't you just kick him out of class? <laughs> and she said, you can't oh. make it up. Yeah. She said, Oh, he is a great actor. He'll be great. He just can't be in my class. She's like, other people can't get stuff done when he's in my class. She's like, mm -hmm. but he's great. So yes. he went and auditioned for the director. He got the role. He loved it because he got to cuss through the whole thing. Um, and it was a very adult play. And so he got to say the F word a lot. So he thought that was really great. And um, and then we were backstage and I was nervous because I thought, oh my God, he's in Mrs. Q or he's going to whatever. And I'm anxious. And, um, and he's just like, cool, whatever, no problem. So after one of the shows, the director said, hey, guys, just wanted to remind you next week is a break. We're not doing any shows because, you know, a theater is you do week after week and you have all these rehearsals every single night. And, you know, um, and so I told I was like, oh, I felt all this relief. And I told Jaden, we're going to have a break next week. No rehearsals, no shows. And he just like this just cloud came over him. And he looked up at me and he said, mom, this is my break. Oh. Like this. Yeah, I love this little guy. He's such a good kid. Yeah. 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 And I was like, oh, man. So I called that agent and I said, we'd love to come back in. He said, I remember you. I remember Jaden. And he said, I would love to see him. And so we brought him back in and he signed him and he booked like four commercials. In yeah, that I see him on TV. Event. He was yeah. just on the Keenan show, right? He, yes, he played young Keenan Thompson. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I see him all the time in commercials and I'm like, I know yeah. that kid. Yeah, it's, it's fun for him. You know, it's so funny because he doesn't care about all the status stuff. Mm -hmm. He just wants to work. It's he, in him. He's an actor. Yeah. He's an actor. You can yeah. feel it. Yeah. Yeah, he'll memorize 10 scenes a week to do auditions, you know, and he does it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he does it. I mean, I'm a smart person, but he he just has that talent. Like, yeah. I don't think yeah. I could do that. Well, know? it's like almost like a Kevin Bacon. I love Kevin Bacon. I think he's, <laughs> well, I mentioned him because if people say Tom Cruise, but Kevin Bacon, he can act. I'm watching City on the Hill. Let me tell you something. He goes into character. And he's played so many different characters, almost like the way Patrick Swayze uh, did. They, they can go into character. And I think when you, the people can go into different characters and play many roles because you can feel it. It's in you. When I write, I'm in my zone. Like, I know I was born to write, honey. I, I'd be like, I am, girl. You were. <laughs> you know, because I, fi I finally found, found it, found my niche. So Jaden, he, he just spiritually, you just know it. Yeah, he found he found it early, and I'm yeah. I'm so uh, I'm so happy that he did, especially struggling with the ADHD and depression and that kind of stuff. Like having acting is a real uh, it's an outlet for him. Yes. You know, it, it's his mm -hmm. safe space. It's and it's, so mm -hmm. yeah. So when parents come to me and say that they want to get their kid into acting, um, there's a lot of you know, I mean, it's hard work. It's a it, job. First of yeah, all, I think it's actually a career. It's a job. The yeah. thing about Jaden, this is the way he expresses himself. Yeah. This is the way he speaks. See, and a lot of times people, like you said, they just want to be seen or for many different reasons, but usually it's an expression. The theater, uh, 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 anytime you're in the spotlight in the industry, I call it, it, when you're good in the industry because you have something to say, it's, your, it's how you speak to the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And he's always been that kid. And, um, and, you know, I mean, I, I, 
like I said earlier, my one of my main goals is to raise good human beings, but Jaden just came onto the earth good. Yes, he he's, did. He's just inclusive and beautiful and wonderful and has a lot of struggles, just like all the other kids, but um, but is just a beautiful human being. He's super smart. Like I love him. He is super smart. It's like talking to an adult. Well, and it makes <laughs> then you can imagine how it is for me when I'm trying to get him to do stuff. He's like, Mom, let's talk about why that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So in this crazy world, okay, because kind of like back to the beginning, I, yeah. I I always people I don't really talk politics uh because everything's so you know i don't want i really watch tv now because everything's so unless i'm watching my showtime shows and my hbo i have friends that do tv series so i'm of course i'm going to support that right? watch. <laughs> it's not too shabby right <laughs> of course but i don't do politics i don't like to do any of the uh news i because everything's a lie everything's about crime everything's based on swing you to think this way or swing you to think that way and i'm just so it's like enough already and I like when you say you are raising good human beings. You know, I know your, your kids identify as black, you know, whether you, or African, you know, I think, but all the labels, we are human beings, we're human. And the yeah. labels are put in place for other people to benefit. And right. here's a, where we are in the world to me. We, you and I have been friends for quite some time, but we never had to push, thank God we're not ignorant. But we never have to push past all push past all that bull to be in relationship. But a lot of times you gotta push past all push past all that muck just to find someone, just to find the person. Right. That, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. So do you have any pointers or cues for people who come out to Los Angeles? Because that is a tough one. Because finding people who aren't crazy, not just LA, <laughs> anywhere. I'll be fair. I travel a lot. I know you do too. Anywhere. What, what, what's your thought process as you try to decipher through? Like to find genuine connection? Yeah. I think that um, I, I, I try to, I, I try to the best of my ability to um, meet opposition or conflict with compassion. And I have to remind myself of that all of the time. It makes me a better person. If I, if I take all the hate and negativity and I internalize it, it, it brings my energy down, right? It sucks me dry. And so I really try to approach those, those types of instances with compassion. Um, but I struggle and I, I work through it and I, and part of it is just, you know, being aware um, and then trying to consciously make a decision. I'm not going to let this, you know, impact my energy negatively so that I continue to have to give. I continue to have a full cup so that I can actually nurture relationships that are meaningful and genuine and wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, I think being open to those types of relationships and not being cynical. Um, I think a lot of people don't believe that there is a lot of genuine connection out there. And so maybe they approach life with a cynicism um, and that will guarantee that you do not have those genuine connections right yeah um, and and also to ex to not to expect that like all of a sudden you're going to just like be you know best friends with somebody like or that you're going to meet a new amazing person that's going to be embedded in your life you know all the time right. I mean I have very few close friends mm -hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy, you know, more casual exchanges with people who mm -hmm. are like-minded and, and who are open. Um, I, you know, I think, um, yeah, I think trying to get that cynicism out of your own self, um, mm -hmm. and, and trying to have compassion and maybe a little bit more understanding, you know, it's funny. I was telling my husband this the other night, actually, we were sitting out in the back after the kids went to bed and, you know, had our little lights on and we were kind of chilling out. It was nice to just have connection time. And I said, you know, um, I didn't go looking for you. I said, I worked on myself to make myself ready hmm. for when the right person came along. Wow. Because if you spend all your time chasing relationships, whether they're romantic or they're friendships, which as you get older, feel just as important, 
right? Like when you're younger, you're more focused on the love, love, love thing. But when you get older, you're like, man, <laughs> I need, a, I need some people. I need like my people. Right. And, um, and not just my significant other, but like, you know, some other people, um, and those relationships become more important. I think making yourself ready, uh, is maybe now that I'm talking about it, like maybe that's the, the best or, you know, advice that I would have being open and open and available to, to yeah. it. To yeah. It. And focus on, focus on making yourself ready for those amazing. Right. Relationships. Right. Cause what's the old saying? Don't look for a good friend unless you know how to be a good friend. Yeah. Let's start yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So I want to thank you so much for coming on the hammer away show today. We will definitely have to do this again. Where oh, do we find you? Where do we find Yahoo to who? <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, Yahoo to who is at yahoodihoo.com. We have an IG you can follow at Yahoo to who. Um, I'm Jen Olo. So on, on IG, J E N O L O O. And I kind of post about all of the things. Um, and Jaden is on IG, Jaden Olo, J A I D Y N, because I had to spell it differently when he was born. Isn't that so funny? <laughs> how we do that to ourselves um so Jaden Nolo is on IG and you can follow his acting career there if you have you know thoughts or questions about your kid actor I'm always you know I I'm I'm in the DMs you can hit me up <laughs> okay and, and I'm sure people you opened yourself up to that and I'm I, sure know. People will. I know I know that would, <laughs> if I were like you know if I had like a million followers that probably would be different but when you got a, when you got thousands instead you can kind of manage it <laughs> and, right, and you want to give back you want to give back so thank you Jen I'll stay in touch I'll have you back on the show everyone have thanks. a great afternoon. Did you want to say something, love? No, I just wanted to say thank you. You're wonderful. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Take care, everyone. And remember to keep God first. See you, Jen.